Hey guys, so I know I made a skull video and quite a few of you said that you wanted me to make videos of the rest of the bones, so um, I'm going to start by kind of sectioning them off. This first one is going to be um, the remaining axial except for the skull, uh, then we'll do an upper appendicular and lower appendicular, okay? So um, to start off with the axial uh, and the vertebral column, we're gonna start with the atlas, which is our C1. Remember C standing for cervical. We have seven cervical vertebrae. Uh, we then have 12 thoracic and five lumbar. Uh, the atlas is unique in its shape. Uh, it's unlike any of the others. Here we go. All right, so here's our atlas here. Um, and the largest hole in the center is our vertebral foramen. And these masses here that are on either side, they are lateral to the vertebral foramen. They are lateral masses. Um, from there, we've got these holes on the side. These are our transverse foramen. And then uh, a side kind of like the tops of the lateral masses. Um, we then have these smooth regions right here. Uh, this is what our, um, our occipital condyles are gonna rest against. And this is what we refer to as our superior articular facets. Okay, and so we have two of those that are superior. Um, so that's pretty much it for the atlas, your C1. So let's go ahead and take a look at C2 because C2 is also pretty unique. So here we are, we have our uh, C2 and we now have a spinous process. We didn't have this on our atlas. Now that we're on our axis, we do have a spinous process the spinous process is what's going to represent the posterior of the vertebrae. Forgot that word for a second, sorry. Um, from there, we still have our vertebral foramen, right? The large central hole. Um, and then these holes on the side are transverse foramen. We still have our superior articular facets, okay? These smooth top parts. Um, and we have a new structure here, kind of points up. See that, this guy? That's the dens. Um, and the dens is unique because it's going to allow, if I just put these together here. The dens is going to allow the atlas to pivot like this. So that's how we can turn. We kind of like rotate on that dens and then the up and down comes from the superior articular facets of the atlas right here. Okay. All right. So now that we've talked about the atlas and axis, let's go ahead and talk about a typical uh, cervical vertebrae. Um, first thing to mention, some of them um, in our models are going to have just one spinous process like this, um, but very common in our cervical vertebrae is this structure. Let me show it on the side. Uh, this is a bifid spinous process. So when it has two of them, it's a bifid. Um, and just like before, if the spinous process is pointing downward, we are now in the correct orientation so that we know this is superior and this is inferior, okay? Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at this structure here. Um, so we're gonna start off with the bifid, okay? And then the arm extending off of the bifid is the lamina, okay? The lamina is going to take us to this kind of um, upper structure that we call our superior articular facet. It's very smooth on this area. Um, and then just before we get to our transverse um, foramen, just next to it, I apologize, I know that this is kind of hard to see. 
Mm, this guy. This little arm between the superior articular facet and what is the body, this is our pedicle. Okay, so we've got our lamina, we've got our superior articular facet, the body, and the pedicle right here. We then have our transverse foramen, which is this hole here on the side, and then we've got this section of bone here, which is our transverse process. These are going to be much larger in our lower vertebrae, and we'll talk about that when we get to that point. Um, again, we still have our vertebral foramen, um, where our spinal cord is going to run through. And um, one last thing I want to mention, we had our superior articular facet, this smooth portion up here. If we turn to the inferior side, we're going to have these smooth portions here as well. These are going to be our inferior articular facets. Okay. Let's go ahead and look at a thoracic. I have like, like a string of vertebrae here. <laughs> okay. All right. Here we go. So we're looking at a typical thoracic, right? It's currently, we have the spinous process pointing downward. So we know that it is in the correct orientation. Um, spinous process is probably the, one of the more obvious things to point out. Again, we still have the, uh, we still have the vertebral foramen where your spinal cord is gonna run through, okay? Um, and again, the sections are gonna stay the same. We still have our lamina, we still have our pedicle, um, but the pedicle is now going to be further forward. So between here, can you see this okay? Hopefully. There we go. Pedicle, lamina. Um, and then we still have our superior articular facet, but now they kind of stand upright. See that? So this is the process itself, but the smooth part is going to be the facet. So it's still the superior articular process, but we've got the smooth portion, which is the superior articular facet. Um, transverse process is much more pronounced. We no longer have a transverse foramen. Okay, that's going to distinguish um, between our cervicals and thoracic. Our thoracic don't have that transverse foramen like the cervicals do. Um, then if you look on the body, um, we're still looking at the superior side. We now have these little areas here that kind of slope off the side of the body. That's what is going to be our superior costal facet. Costal as in costal cartilage. Um, it's not where, it's not actually costal cartilage right here. It's what will attach to that area, just to specify. So that's our, um, superior side. Let's go ahead and look at the inferior side. Similar to the, um, cervicals, we've got these smooth regions in here. These are gonna, these are going to be our interior, inferior articular facets. Okay, they're nice and smooth. Um, and then just like how we had that um, superior costal facet, we are also going to have an inferior costal facet. And it's just kind of like the area on the corners of the body that just slope right there. Okay. I really hope I'm making these uh, visible for you. I'm, I'm trying. I, I'm sorry. Okay. Lastly, let's look at our lumbar. I'm just checking my notes to make sure I cover everything for you. Again, spinous process pointing downward, right? So we are in the correct orientation. 
This is our superior side here. So we've got the body. We've got our transverse process. If we look from a lateral view, we have our superior articular process. The smooth portion of it will be our facet. Okay? Facet right here. If we move to the in inferior, I don't know why I keep wanting to say interior. If we move to the inferior side, we then have the inferior um, articular facet. Uh, same with the other ones though, we still have our lamina. Let me see, there we go. Lamina and pedicle and vertebral foramen. Right? So that's it for the vertebrae. As you can see, they kind of start to repeat one another, um, which kind of helps. So really, it's just figuring out, am I looking at a lumbar? Am I looking at a cervical? Those are very different sizes, for sure. Um, and then just kind of looking at the variation of their features, because you know they're, they're still going to have the vertebral foramen, and they're going to have well, not all of them have a body. They, they're going to have that superior articular facet. It's just what is the variation of that feature on that particular region of your vertebrae. Um, to continue on with our vertebrae from my bag of bones, I'm going to go ahead and get a um, sacrum. Okay, let's talk about this guy, shall we? Hmm. Check my notes. All right. Let's go ahead and take a look at the anterior. Ready? Superior articular process. Uh, they're peeking back here. Right here. Good? All right. Then um, we've got this little wing section. See these here? These little side wings. Um, they're the alas. And then we also have the sacral promontory right here, which I'm just kind of running my pen against. From there, each horizontal line is going to be our transverse line. As you can see, it's moving in the transverse plane, and it's a line. So we have our transverse lines. Uh, and then the holes... Um, because we're on the anterior side, it's the anterior sacral, sacrum, foramina, foramen, but multiples, okay? Um, and then this little tail guy is our coccyx. Uh, just a few more things on the posterior to cover. Again, we can see our superior articular process. The smooth part is going to be our facet. Um, this area here, hope you can see it okay, right here, that's what we refer to as the auricular surface. Um, we then have our lateral sacral crests. Mm -hmm. And then we have our median sacral crest, the ones in the middle. The holes on this side are what we refer to as posterior sacral foramina, and then again, the coccyx, okay? Um, I think we just have one more thing to talk about for the axial skeleton. That would be, oh, here we go, the sternum. Uh, so let's go ahead and talk about the sternum as well as we're going to talk a little bit about the ribs. Um, so first off, this right here, this little, you can feel your own, is the suprasternal notch. Supra meaning high up, um, sternal. And notch because it's kind of like a notch was just taken right out of there. So that's our suprasternal notch. Um, and then right next to it we have our clavicular notch. The clavicular notch is where your clavicle is going to attach. From there, this whole large piece is the manubrium, um, and the angle that you see, actually, it's kind of like an indent on our models. This is the sternal angle. 
um, each little notch going down the side where this costal cartilage is attached is going to be our costal notches. The actual, um, like, looks like a tie kind of thing of your sternum is the body. And then this pointy guy at the bottom is our xiphoid process. Last one is the rib. Sorry, I know it kind of looks odd. Um, so first off, this kind of flat region right here, this is going to be our costal groove. And then where we have the attachment to the vertebrae, we've got the head, the tubercle, which is this nice bump right here, and then where it curves is the angle. And that's it for the axial skeleton. I hope you can see everything okay. If you have any issues or questions, be sure to ask, okay? Thanks for watching.